coming up. We've been told it must be one of, the, of Scotland's most beautiful anchorages. So without uh, the Antares charts and the chart plotter, this would be quite a difficult piece of navigation. Southeast, and uh, it will then blow us up there. Look at these two beauties, cleaning off all that stuff from the waterline. I just would like to catch something different than mackerels. And today we're just going 14 miles into Olapool. She was owned by Sir Francis Chichester. However, the wind is already picking up in anticipation of Storm Betty. And then I have a shock line, which is actually a climbing rope. So far, the highest gust we had is uh, 53 knots. So today we're uh, leaving Loch Inver. We're just uh, going out of the harbour, around here, around this island here, and then out in a westerly direction. Our destination of today are the Summer Isles. There must be a stunning anchorage just around the corner here. It's about 14 nautical miles just along the coast. We hope it's going to be a nice anchorage there on the Summer Isles. We've been told it's uh, beautiful. It must be one of, the, of Scotland's most beautiful anchorages. So we're very keen to go there. Uh, we can probably stay for one or two days uh, and Thursday we have to find a solution. Thursday evening uh, the weather turns and uh, we will have some more wind so we want to be in again. Uh, we go either we will either go to Alapool which is just around the corner from there or a little bit further to Geloch which is a little bit further down. We shall see uh, where they have space and everything. For now we're just enjoying a nice ride between these beautiful islands and in this landscape. It's a wonderful place and uh, Loch Inver has been very kind to us. Uh, it's highly recommended to go in there. Shelter is good, it's a lovely village and the people are really nice. Again, we only meet nice people up here in Scotland. Impossible to spot the entrance here. I think we can just about see it from now, or the guess where it is. So without uh, the Antares charts and the chart plotter, this would be quite a difficult piece of navigation, I think. Uh, the swell has come down and um, I think it's quite a protected anchorage we're actually in. It's, not, it's a bit narrow to get in, but uh, otherwise I think it's nice and we're checking out the summer on the Summer Isles. So on Antares charts we have a good detail. So we go through here, it's very narrow here, it's about maybe maybe 150, 200 meters here. And uh, then we go, we try to go down here, find our anchorage down here. Now that's supposed to be the best one. Although there's a small tidal, a little tidal stream going through. If that's nothing, there's one here. There's another one here we can try out. And that's the difference between the Antares charts that have quite a few details versus the ones on Garmin and Navionics. It's just uh, this red, area here where they don't have actually a survey so uh, you wouldn't want to get in just with these charts but uh, on Antares it looks good. The Summer Isles are an archipelago of about 20 islands, rocks and skerries in the mouth of Loch Broom close to Olapool. The largest island, called Tanera Moor, used to be a thriving herring fishing port and suffered the decline of the industry. In the 1880s, it was inhabited by no less than 120 people. As far as we know, it was permanently inhabited until 2014. Its incredible rock formations, caves and beaches remain a popular destination for local cruise boats and kayakers.
have anchored in the center of this pool here uh, with the nose obviously into the wind we will go down another meter so the minimum uh, depth we had here was uh, 5.2 meters so we will have 4.2 meters at, at the minimum in this area which is fine the wind is then supposed to turn into this direction so from north to southeast and uh, it will then blow us up there but we've sailed up there and we checked it out there's plenty of depth over there so i think we should be fine so this time it's for real after our huge success we had when we were off handa island where we caught last time we caught a lobster and about 15 velvet swimming crabs uh, we thought we'd give it a try here and the first thing we do is drop our lobster pot so everything's prepared we have a stinky mackerel here it's about a week old and uh, caught in kindlock berry so we take that one out that's not got a nice smell again i think whoa this is oh that's disgusting that's bad no. That's really badly reeking. Oh. Okay. Oh, I did it on my head. Okay. So let's see what we catch tomorrow. The nice thing is, you just drop it and you leave it. You don't have to work like that. If you like this episode so far, please give us a thumb up. And if you don't want to miss our next episode, subscribe to our channel and press the notification button. And we always look forward to your comments below. And a very special thank you goes to Dom, Shona and Charlotte from the good ship Moria. Thank you for the delicious box of Swiss chocolate. You made our day. Look at these two beauties. Unfortunately, they're both on the side, so we're gonna let them go again. I'm gonna put them back in the in the pot and then they're gonna go back in the in the water back nothing? in the water yeah, yes yeah. oh it's a pity the fishing <laughs> is a bit frustrating <laughs> i catch many mackerels but all but one are too small without wanting to sound picky I just would like to catch something different than mackerels. I'm cleaning off all that stuff from the waterline. It's horrible. It's about 30 centimeters long already. Every couple of weeks, we have to clean our waterline from growing algae. The last time was in Papa's store in Shetland. Maybe and because we have been up to the far north, where the sun barely sets during the summer, we appreciate every glimpse of a sunset or a sunrise. Nothing is more peaceful than hanging on the hook in an anchorage all by ourselves in a remote place. And what could be more beautiful than watching the sun go down between the islands, reflecting in these stunning warm colors of the golden hour. This is Scotland at its finest.
we just uh, left uh, our anchorage of the last two days of the summerise. It's uh, Thursday the 17th of August and today we're just going 14 miles into Olapool. Uh, there is some blow coming uh, later today, tomorrow and on Saturday and uh, we decided to go uh, in an anchor, in an anchorage respectively, in a visitor's mooring in, in Olapool and uh, explore Olapool a bit. Weather is nice, there is a southwesterly wind of about 15 knots, so we'll have it on our head all the time. It's going to be motoring, there's not going to be a lot of sailing today, I think. It's uh, a pity, but that's how it is. We had a very nice anchorage and enjoyed the two days there. On our ride to the shore, we passed this classic beauty, the famous Gypsy Moth 3. She was owned by Sir Francis Chichester, who was the first man to sail around the world single-handedly and non-stop in 1967. Seven years earlier, however, in 1960, Sir Francis and the Gypsy Moth 3 won the first observer single-handed transatlantic race known as the All-Star Race, found by Blondie Hustler. Even today, this race continues to take place, starting in Plymouth, ending in New York, single-handed across the wild North Atlantic Ocean. The weather is sunny and warm, however, the wind is already picking up in anticipation of Storm Betty, which we will witness in a few hours. Stay tuned! We take the opportunity before the storm for a hike along the beautiful rugged north shore of Loch Broom from Olapool to the Robber Cadale Lighthouse. This is the wreck of the Fair Morn. She was built on the Clyde in 1948 as a fishing boat for the herring industry on the west coast of Scotland. In her late years, she spent a few years as a supply boat for the fishing factory ships that were anchored in Loch Broom. She was then beached for maintenance work, but sadly, she never made it back to sea after being battered by a storm. And so, she remains as a backdrop for the nearby holiday cottages. It was a two hours walk, hike along the coast. It was a bit exhausting actually, walking on the shingles and up and down and uh, the path. So it was quite, uh, quite a tough one, despite the fact that it's flat and no up and downs a lot, but um, still, we're going to feel it tonight. I was climbing a little bit the cliffs and walking over rocks, so it was kind of... <sighs> now it's time for some sandwiches. And our way back to Olapool leads us six kilometers along the dull main road. Well, at the moment everything looks quite okay here. There's a bit of a wind going, but it's maybe 15 knots or so. From the southeast, there's a bit of a swell, but we can't feel a lot actually here on Polaris. It's Olapool in the background. It's a warm wind actually blowing, but soon that's going to be likely to change. So here's how the situation looks. That's uh, Friday, four o'clock. So about in an hour, the forecast, and we see here this huge low, and actually it's composed in two lows, one here and one over here, a secondary over here, which is uh, going to hit us tonight. So if we go through the pictures, that's coming up the Irish Sea 
and then right across our heads with the strong winds before it then goes away tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon the worst should be over. That's just the normal wind. So I go back and if we look at the at the wind gust model, looks a bit different. So it should be gusting 30, which we have seen actually uh, this uh, lunchtime. And then we see it building, building up. Uh, that's midnight, we're gonna have 36. 1 o'clock 38, 39, 40 at 3 o'clock, 42 at 4. It looks like it's peaking between 4 and 7, 4 and 8 o'clock. It, it, uh, it is peaking at just over 40 knots in gusts. Interesting hours coming in about 12 hours. We're going to have probably mayhem and I'll uh, keep us updated how uh, this looks. The wind is currently blowing from the southeast, uh, but it's supposed to be turning towards the east. So southeast, we're quite all open actually to the inside of uh, the loch. But uh, when it turns, it should turn to the east and east is roughly in this direction. So the wind should come down uh, over the hills here. There's uh, some trees as well. And I hope that may be breaking it a bit. So I do hope that we're not going to be hit too much with these gusts of 44 that are forecast. So um, if everything holds up, then I think we should be pretty fine. The waves should then also be turning and there shouldn't be too much of a, of a swell. That would be different if the wind came from that side. We would have quite a wide open area actually where some nasty waves can build up. We've made some preparations. Fred Ardingi. We have a double line here on the side that uh, one goes to the towing eye underneath and then I have a shock line which is actually a climbing rope. So uh, I went and asked in a climbing center uh, for an old piece of rope and what's uh, different with these they are elastic because obviously uh, if you fall down as a climber you want uh, some sort of almost a bungee cord that uh, will uh, soften the blow and um, it's quite amazing what this actually does I can quickly maybe demonstrate that so that's with it on you see the dinghy is quite stable actually it doesn't move too much if I take the shock cord off and just let it out on the normal on the, on the normal painter which is not elastic so you see it's got it's yanking much more and banging around the arrangement on the bow is similar so we have two lines going through that massive eye it's a massive mooring buoy down here that will hold for sure and i've put again a climbing rope uh, in there maybe you can see it better like that trying to act with it as a shock cord as a shock cord bungee and uh, we'll see whether that uh, works. It's eight o'clock in the evening. It's nice weather. The wind is east-ish with a force four to five, so nothing really bad. Uh, there's not a big swell yet at the moment. It looks quite okay. For the time being, let's enjoy the beautiful sunset. morning it's three o'clock storm Betty is in full swing we uh, so far the highest gust we had is uh, 53 knots uh, normally it's oscillating between like a high six so 26 27 28 knots up to around at the high 30s that would be an eight so six to eight but um, we had a gust the highest gust was a force was that a force 10 um, so it's uh, pretty hairy at times although the waves are um, quite high outside for that we're just <laughs> in a fjord um, they are long and uh, they're not breaking so it 
it's not too bad the motions of the boat it's just yanking on the uh, on the mooring buoy i saw we were we were moving at 0.8 knots on marine traffic just around the buoy so it's uh, quite hefty movement that's the that's the wind that's blowing us from side to side all right that's the mooring buoy for the neighboring boat there was actually a boat here uh, until this afternoon but they chickened out they went into the harbor i asked the harbor master as well he didn't want us there he said he doesn't want any boats there so i wonder what they did they just overstayed their their filling slot i think so that's how it looks and as i go to bed around 4 a.m the worst of storm betty is over despite the strong gusts the night was relatively uneventful and our climbing rope shock absorbers did a great job Join us next time when I'll be fed up with sitting on a mooring an buoy. We can sail and then it's uh, engine against the wind. The wind has freshened up now. Uh, we think it's time to take a second reef also in the main. Change of plan. As you see, it's quite rough. We go into Gerloch. Catherine found some delicious blackberries. That was quite a zigzag. Uh, there were about 20 fault markers that we had to uh, take care of sail from Rosé Pontoons, where we are, down here through the Straits of Caleria and then down to Malik. Just waiting for the sun to come up or the light to come up uh, so that we can see something. Malik Harbour, Malik Harbour, Malik Harbour. This is sailing vessel Polaris Helvetica, Polaris Helvetica.